on the 20th day of October, Halloween gave to me 20 Japanese giallos, 19 kung fu vampires, 18 haunted marches, 17 eternal lonelinesses, 16 cursed VHS tapes, 15 spectral snapshots, 14 mothers murdering, 13 prices bleeding, 12 models dying, 11 Betty's baking, 10 prices burning, 9 seagulls pecking, 8 scientists sneaking, 7 goldwin shooting, 6 psychic scamming, 5 naked witches, 4 alien spelunking, 3 UFO abductions, two deputy so-and-sos, and a masked hawk being creepy. Hey everyone, welcome to day 20 of our 31 Days of Halloween and the end of our Asian horror uh, retrospective, our survey of Asian horror for this year. Uh, I've had a great time, by the way, dipping my toes back into some movies that I love or haven't seen or haven't seen in a while and all that fun stuff. And so the uh, we're gonna end things with Evil Dead Trap. And Evil Dead Trap is a movie that we've discussed before, but uh, I love it. And I went back to watch it again and realized that I still love it. It, it is difficult as a movie, look, there. if you told me that you saw Evil Dead Trap and you thought it was ridiculous and a little off-putting and uh, exploitative and, and all of that stuff, I would say you are not wrong. But the kind of sleazy nature of Evil Dead Trap is one of the things I love about it. It, it's, it feels very grindhouse in a way that a lot of Japanese films don't. It is, uh, it, it, like, there's the Japanese splatter movies, right? Like the uh, Nishimura and Ibuchi films and uh, the Ariguchi films. Uh, th those types that are kind of gleefully over the top. But they're very silly. They're almost like uh, yokai films or something, only just really gory. Whereas something like this, which uh, is directed by uh, Toshiharu Ikeda... Uh, who is best known for this film. And I think he's done some pink f uh, films as well. Um, a couple called like Double X, Beautiful Beast and Beautiful Prey and Beautiful Target and uh, uh, Female Prisoner, Scorpion, Death Threat. Uh, and, and, you know, Sex Hunter. He was responsible for that movie. And, you know, a little bit sleazy, right? And sometimes I'm just not above it. Sometimes you need a little sleaze. And I'm not saying it makes you a good person or a bad person. Sometimes it's just what you want. And Evil Dead Trap is that kind of movie. And so here's the premise. If you've never seen Evil Dead Trap, here's what it is. And, and the name alone conjures to mind Evil Dead, right? Uh, you know, sort of dizzying camera work and uh, possession and that kind of thing. And there's maybe a hint of that, but not really. Um, this is more of a giallo film. Uh, it, it's just a really, really uh, like over the top giallo film in some ways. Maybe, maybe it's not even over the top for giallo. I'm not, you know, it's not my uh, milieu. It is, the, it is not the uh, subgenre of horror that I know the most about. And so. For me to say that it's over the top as a giallo, it just may prove my ignorance about uh, what I'm talking about. But it, it is definitely more of a giallo than it is a, a supernatural horror film or, or a, uh, you know, what the, the title would suggest. Being from the West and knowing what the the phrase Evil Dead conjures. But uh, so the, the premise of this is that there's a, a woman who works as... Uh, a, like a late night new show host, a, a sort of a, a human interest kind of stories and that kind of thing. Uh, her name is Nami, played by Miyuki Ono. And she uh, gets an invitation uh, to come check out this like eerie old factory or whatever. And it's in a tape that essentially shows someone being tortured and murdered. And for whatever reason... The, the uh, news reporter thinks that it would be a great idea to go investigate this because she thinks it's a put-on. You know, she doesn't think 
that it's really somebody being killed. But of course it is. Like she and her crew show up and one by one they are picked off until uh, only uh, Nami is left and uh, you know she comes face to face with the killer and in typical Jello fashion there's a bit of a twist as to who the killer is and what the killer wants and uh, boy does, does it get ridiculous but here's what makes Evil Dead Trap great and also what makes it terrible and, and why you should never watch Evil Dead Trap and also why you should totally watch uh, Evil Dead Trap um, it is very grisly in terms of its death, one of the first ones you see, not the one on the videotape, but uh, one of the early murders is just a bunch of random pipes falling through somebody and coming out of somebody. And it's shocking. It's really, really uh, like audacious. And from there, it just gets more gruesome. There's one set up in particular involving a crossbow tied to a door handle that is a nice little head fake of a kill that I really enjoy. And, you know, there's the the creepy guy kind of wandering around uh, this abandoned factory who you wonder, like, oh, is this somebody that is... Uh, is this actually the murderer? No, maybe, but not really, but also kind of. And uh, it is kind of nonsense when you find out what's really happening but it's also the kind of nonsense I can really get behind and then there's another guy who's like oh you know I'm trapped here and so maybe if I bring you to the killer uh, this spoken to this woman trying to escape then they'll let me go and also I'm going to sexually assault you while I'm having this conversation with you. And like I said, this movie is incredibly difficult to watch at times. It is not, you know, the depiction of the rape isn't super graphic, but it's graphic enough that it's really, really uncomfortable. But also it's just that kind of like, what in the hell is this? What is going on in this movie? Um, why like every kill is over the top every interaction between the characters is heightened. Like the whole thing feels a bit uh, uh, hyperbolic, almost like this weird fever dream. And so then you come to the end of the movie and I don't want to spoil it because if you've never seen it, it's worth the, the ridiculousness uh, of it to, to keep it to myself and let you as uh, a new viewer to evil dead trap uh, experience how bonkers the end of this is but it is a reveal that you know harkens to mind something like phenomenon uh the argento film something like that where it's just like oh so that's what's happening in this movie um okay i guess and i it's uh, difficult to wrestle with and it and it it's completely um, not out to completely out of left field because the movie does nod towards the ending, but it's just such a ridiculous uh, uh, answer to who is committing these murders. Um, so you know, it, but uh, but that's what I love about it. And the the like, there is a segment of the movie in the second act that when when. Uh, Nami is kind of running around the place trying to avoid getting murdered and also try to solve this mystery and to save her friends and all that, that it drags just a little bit. The movie comes in around an hour and 40 minutes. Should have been about 10 minutes shorter because there is a little bit of sag in this film. But uh, if you can get through that bit of wandering around and get to the actual end of this movie it then kicks into like seventh gear and gets crazier by the second. Um, and, and, and then culminates in a moment at the very end of the movie, like the final shot of the movie, which is even crazier than the rest of it. Uh, evil dead trap is uh, again, it, it's exploitative. It is, uh, it is certainly, um, 
of its time, by which I mean like the mid to late 80s. And, you know, its treatment of women is really terrible, but that's true of a lot of Japanese cinema. It, it's just... Uh, it just revels in its grossness and it and its um, uh, it like sleaziness uh, as a film. Like it's it's just grindhouse nature, and the fact that it's just completely unapologetic about it kind of appeals to me um, because I'm really sensitive to you know movies that are uh, going out of their way to be shocking or disturbing, and that's their selling point. You know, like Terrifier is a great example, right? Like I don't, I don't care for Terrifier because I don't think it has much of a story. It's just, you know, how gross can we be? How awful can we be to people? And Evil Dead Trap has hints of that. Like there, that spice is in this mix, but it, the plot is also kind of bonkers. And in the reason for the movie is not the gore or the sexual assault or any of that stuff. That is all just part and parcel of the story that it is telling. Um, and then, you know, you can call that splitting hairs and that I'm, I'm making excuses for a movie that is outrageous in its presentation. Uh, but I love it. I, you know, again, I will apologize. Nah, not apologize for it. I will forgive it its sins uh, because I do think that the movie is just so entertaining and, and so crazy. Like, if you are the kind of person that's like, I do not want to see, you know, a woman raped over her clothes <laughs> in, in uh, the back of a van as a maybe killer monologues, then this is not the movie for you. But I would say it's no worse. In fact, probably not as bad as like those Death Wish movies of the same era. Uh, I think it's probably a little bit less extreme than even that. But it's still uncomfortable. Still uncomfortable. Uh, but the kills are great. The The end is is pure, uh, like, adrenaline-fueled nonsense in a way that I, I dearly, dearly love it. It is not the movie you think it's going to be until the kills start happening. And you're like, oh, this is just the Japanese version of some of the wilder giallo films. Some of the wilder, like... Uh, not even Fulci, it's like Argento and, and uh, Sergio Martino and, you know, that ilk of let's create this crazy convoluted plot and we're going to insert these kills into it. And it, it even borrows some of that lighting uh, at times. Uh, it, it is very garishly lit sometimes uh, to further ape that giallo style. Um, I, it's just fantastic. You know, Evil Dead Trap is um, not without its flaws and certainly not without its problems uh, in terms of just, you know, thematic material. But it's so good. I enjoy it so much uh, as an example of, of Japanese giallo, which I don't off the top of my head. And I've, you know, I'm no novice when it comes to Asian horror cinema. And it's just not something you see a ton. Like they're, you know, they're much more um, apt to present ghost stories and curse films and you know even some over the top effects films uh, that involves like mutation and that kind of stuff stuff born out of Hiroshima and Nagasaki and that kind of thing that kind of body horror stuff Giallo not super big or at least not in my experience maybe uh, a lot of the pink films dip into this and I you know that's a bit of a blind spot I'm aware of those movies but I haven't seen a ton uh, so maybe there is more of it than I know. And again, let me know if that is the case. Um, so I'll tell you what, we're, we're going to leave it there. You, I'm not going to spoil anything about evil dead trap. If you've never seen evil dead trap, you should. And I will tell you it is available on Amazon prime for free. It is also on Plex. Uh, now that they've opened up as, you know, sort of a video service of their own, it's available there, but it's also, if you want to rent it, you know, it's a couple of bucks on Amazon or three or four bucks on YouTube, that kind of thing. So you can watch Evil Dead Trap, uh, a, a good version of the film for not a lot of money and, and free and if you're an Amazon Prime member. And I would highly recommend that you do. And once you do, please come let me know uh, what you think of Evil Dead Trap because it's one of those that I hesitate to full-throatedly recommend because there is so much stuff in it that's like, well... This is potentially a thing that's going to make you turn the movie off. Um, but I, I really adore it. 
And uh, because it is, it is so aggressively, you know, politically incorrect, I suppose, is a way of putting it. Um, it it's a thing I wrestle with, right? Is like, I know this movie has a lot of just wrong shit in it, but I also can look past that. Or maybe it's because of its willingness to go to those places. Uh, and, and it feels like it kind of earns it. Um, but may, maybe you disagree. And if you do, uh, by all means, uh, go to legionpodcasts.com and uh, click on the post uh, for uh, for this or any of the 31 Days of Halloween episodes. And uh, doing so, you can actually find links to all the social media channels. Um, I highly recommend you drop in on the Discord server. That is where you can find me most of the time. Uh, I, I tend to keep an ear towards the Discord uh, far more than any of the others. I'm, right now, here's the thing. Since I've been on vacation, I haven't been back on Facebook since then. And it's been kind of great. And I know I need to because there are people I'm sure that message me. They're like, hey, we need to set up some recordings. But man, life without Facebook, pretty great. Pretty great, let me tell you. Uh, <laughs> so I'll get to it. I'll get back to it. Um, but if you want to chit-chat about the movies, and I hope you do, I'd, I'd really like to know what people think about Evil Dead Trap once you've seen it. Uh, hop over to the Discord server and you can find me there. Uh, if you are listening to this on the uh, Dark Parade uh, podcast feed, then please check out Legion Podcasts and subscribe uh, where you can get uh, shows like uh, Hello, This is the Doom Show, which is a show uh, that traffics in a lot of GLO films, or uh, Cinema Psyops with Court Psyops, who is also on the Discord channel a bunch. Um, you can also listen to, uh, the, the psycho cast and, uh, geez, the, the podcast on haunted Hill and, uh, Friday nightmares and the butcher shop and a bunch of other shows. And I'm going to forget some. And I apologize to everyone I left out. It's not because I don't love you. It's just cause I'm getting old and sometimes I forget things. Uh, but check out Legion podcast. If you're listening on the Legion podcast feed, uh, then please, I implore you, um, subscribe to the Dark Parade, where we will be doing weekly episodes uh, following uh, the end of October. Um, okay, I think that's going to do it. It is uh, 11 more days until the end of the month, until Halloween, the big day. And so, uh, you know, get your decorations done, get your costume in order. There is little time remaining to celebrate the season. Uh, we are going to start a new run of movies tomorrow that is... is kind of going to lead us to Halloween. It's a, a run of 11 movies, most of which I have seen a couple that I haven't that are all uh, movies that I feel like I need to watch and uh, the, the ones that I haven't seen and all the others are movies that are just stone cold classics and bangers that we haven't talked about in the previous two years of the 31 days of Halloween. It's, it's always fun when I look at the list. I'm like, oh, we've never talked about this movie on this before. So... I get to tell you how much I love some of these movies and, and wax nostalgic about them. And, and, uh, hopefully, uh, you will share in my excitement to talk about some of those films. So, uh, at any rate, uh, that is it for this time around. Everybody stay spooky out there. Have yourselves a, a wonderful day and, uh, come back tomorrow for another episode of the 31 days of Halloween. When we are back to, uh, the American shores, uh, for a, a run of movies that, uh, you probably have seen, but uh, I, I believe I can convince you to watch them again. So uh, that's it for now. Talk to you tomorrow, everybody. Mm -hmm.